Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about Oxfords, one of the most classic, timeless, and versatile shoes a man can have. So what exactly is an Oxford shoe? Its history dates back centuries, and if you want to learn all the details about it, please check out our in-depth guide on our website here. So what exactly is an Oxford? First, it's defined by its quarters, which are closed, unlike a derby or a derby where they're open. Then we have a vamp, like here. It's, um, the ankle is exposed. You usually have a cap toe and a center seam. In it. To learn more about the details of an Oxford and how it differs from a derby or a bloucher, please check out this video. As explained, the Oxford is just defined by these few characteristics. And as such, there are many different kinds out there. Let's do a run through so you know exactly what is what. The first and most important Oxford you should have is the so-called cap toe Oxford. And it's called that way because it has the cap toe. Basically what you're looking for is a shoe with a cap toe, no proging, which means no hole perforations, that's all black with neat lines on an elegant last. This is in fact the very first black Oxford I bought as a teenager, and I still have it today, simply because it's so timeless and versatile. The second shoe you can have is the plain Oxford. And basically, it's like the cap toe Oxford, it just lacks the cap toe. And sometimes you can see a medallion on them, but then it's not a plain Oxford anymore. Usually, the plain Oxford is favored in patent leather for evening shoes so you can wear them with your tuxedo. So how should you wear these Oxfords? Like I said, first one should be in black. If you have another Capto Oxford, you can go with a solid dark brown one that's gonna be versatile or burgundy. Plain Oxfords are best in patent letters for evening wear and nothing else. The third Oxford model is the so-called wingtip Oxford or brogue. Basically what that means, it has a wingtip in front that is like a W, and we did an entire video just about this kind of style, so take a look at it here. The fourth kind of Oxford is a so-called saddle Oxford, or saddle shoe. It has the same close lacing system, but it has a middle strip of leather, which is called a saddle. It's particularly popular in the US, and outside the US, it never really caught on. It's a more casual style, and I suggest you only wear it if you're big into Americana or you just want to create a preppy outfit. Otherwise, it looks out of place. The next Oxford is the so-called Kilty Oxford. It's very rare and it actually has an additional tongue on the outside, which looks a little bit like a kilt, hence the name, and uh, it's sometimes seen on golf shoes. Other than that, I really don't suggest you wear the Kilty unless you have a very specific look in mind but it looks very special and unique and uh, people will definitely ask you about it. A very elegant form of the Oxford is a so-called hole cut. And it's called that way because it is cut from one whole piece of leather. Generally, it has just one center seam in the back and uh, it's very popular these days. The only problem with a hole cut is that if it's made as a ready-to-wear shoe oftentimes, it wrinkles more easily simply because it's one piece of leather that is shaped to your last. So keep that in mind when you invest in one. The next step up from a hole cut is a so-called seamless Oxford. And all that means is that there's actually not a single seam. So you have to get a very good hide that adjusts to the entire last. And that's why it's something you only see in bespoke shoes. Seamless and hole cuts are very sleek and elegant shoes. Sometimes they have a medallion on top and you can wear them with suits, but if you have them in brown and burgundy colors, also with sport coat combinations. Overall though, I'd say it's more in the formal end of things, just because of the clean line and the lack of seams. Another type of Oxford is a so-called U-tip, and it's similar to a wingtip, but it has that U shape when you look at it from the top. It often comes as a spectator, as you can see here, with two tones, and basically it's a, a very loud shoe, it's an unusual shoe, 
and therefore it's only suggested if you want to create an outfit that is defined and that catches people's eyes. That being said, one of the ways to get really a lot out of your Oxfords is to change the color of your shoelaces. While a pair of shoes can cost you $200, $300 or $2,000, a pair of shoelaces costs about 10 bucks and it can really change the entire look. This brown shoe here looks very different with yellow laces. For example, you could add green or red or just brown laces. And basically, with a simple twist, you get an entirely different shoe and it makes the shoe more casual. If you want to invest in some Oxfords to start, I suggest you get a black cap to Oxford with black shoelaces and then a few other colors such as red or yellow or burgundy and even purple works. As a second shoe, I suggest you get a half brook or full brook mid-brown Oxford. And if you want to go a step further, you can get either a tan or a burgundy red one. For example, these two would be good options for your first two shoes. As you grow your shoe collection, you can expand in more unusual models, such as this white Fulbrook, which is great in summer, or the Spectator shoe, which looks great with a plain navy suit or a striped suit. Of course, there are lots of other colors and color combinations for Oxfords, and since it's such a classic, versatile, and timeless last and style, you will find basically anything under the sun. If you want to find out what brands we recommend, please check out our in-depth guide. And if you want to buy high quality, colorful shoelaces in round and flat and in different shapes, please check out our shop. Make sure to check out the article because no matter your budget, we have an option for low, middle and high end.